Never heard of that. Well, if you ever watch the film Gold Diggers of 1933, which features uh, Ginger Rogers mm -hmm. before she started dancing with Fred Astaire, um, they were all on a train, all these dancing girls, and they are going on tour. So they sing, off we're going to shuffle, shuffle off to Buffalo, but more beautifully than I could, so I won't. <laughs> mm. Labels. I'll use those. So you're bottling. I'm bottling some materials for this evening because we have a very interesting project on... Okay. And the very interesting project is the one that I'm doing with the Courthold on the woman who is... Well, it's not just a woman. It's a painting. The bar at the Folie Bergère. And... You'd know it. We can't have the picture because I think we'd have to pay them. But it's a very famous Manny, and there's a woman standing at the bar, and then there's a mirror behind her, and you can see the reflection of a man. We can see the man, but you can't see his reflection. I think that's what it is. Mm. Um, but I was working on the project, on the aroma that would have been in the room, and the project was with the artist Jeremy Della, the man mm -hmm. who managed to get a life-sized bouncy castle of Stonehenge to go on tour around the UK <laughs> and other things and win the Turner Prize and stuff but and and lots did of you released an album or something no yeah acid brass that's right yeah and did the Battle of War Grief and yes yes so I got, I got in the same room and all these young people were doing uh, oh, knitted oranges it's because there's a pile of candied oranges on the bar mm -hmm. and paintings and cushions and many other pieces of artwork inspired by that painting because the most famous one they've got. Next mm. The one that I would stand there but I'll go out shot one time. She was standing like that at the bar like that except with her head. Yes. So Step this evening, yes, this evening I am, uh, I've got to give a talk about it, but I can't take the usual materials, we can't spray anything in the room and we can't even drop them, so just in case they go on the precious artwork. So what I've got to do is put them in rollerballs mm -hmm. and people are going to get a postcard of the picture and then they can scent it. Oh, that's with, great. Yes, yes. I think it was my idea. Mm. Um, possibly not. So, since I have to bottle everything, I thought I'd tell you what, what we're putting in it and do that. As How many have you got to do? Hmm, 20, but we don't have to keep going. Well, I was going to say, I can do some while you talk. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, okay. What would you like to do? I haven't told you what there is yet. I don't know. Um, well, okay, so I've got Aurelion, which you do like, so mm -hmm. I'll give you that one. And then we can smell them at the same time. Oh, yes, we're going to smell things. That's that's the plan. I mean, we're not just yeah. going to sit here watching me bottling because that would be a bit tedious. Well, you know, not when you're talking to us as well. Mm. Smelling strips. Aurelion bottle. So you, you put oh, you're only doing one there. bottle of each, are you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, That's right, not going to okay. be 20 forever, so it's just like... I understand. You can do that. So we, do you want to smell the... smell the Aurelion then? Yeah. And out of shot, Arthur Mike Bain is bottling a thing. Put two drips on there. And I can tell you why. You can probably guess why. And I will have you know, I know what I think this smells like. But when Jeremy Dallas smelled it, he said the exact same thing. Well, it smells like um, it smells like a some kind of cigar box to me. Something wooden, or or a placemat, or a coaster. Well. Also, 
<laughs> like this, I am going to say, it smells a bit like old clothes and charity shops. Ah, yeah, it does. It's that one. And we passed it around the room, you did, actually. say. Charity shops. Um, it reminds me yeah, a lot a bit. of an old building that my great aunt Hetty used to live in. Sherburn Hall in County Durham. Aurelion. Yeah. So I've done it the label. So that I have used for the smell of clothes because in those days they just weren't washed so ridiculously often. Should we, we should talk about that as well. There is really no mm. need <laughs> to go washing a clean pair of trousers just because you've had them on for one day. No. And Or clean other things. Plus these days there are um, thank you. Hold on. There are things in fabric conditions, which one may or may not prove off, but fabric, have we gone dark, by the way? Oh, yeah, we have. I'm getting the hang of this. Yeah, well done. Thanks. Fabric conditions. Should probably be focusing on that. Um, okay. And washing powders. Mm. They have sort of timed release aromas in them so that clothes actually smell cleaner for longer so you don't need to keep washing them all mm -hmm. the time. And you know, one, your clothes last longer and two, you don't use so much hot water and resources and fabric conditioner and stuff. You know what this is? It's, it's evil um, isn't it getting you to do this out of context? No, this is uh, oak moss or something. It's no, oak moss or something. It's uh, labdanum something. It's you're getting so you're so close. It's in. It's one of those things. It's in Chypres. And it is patchouli. Oh yeah yeah. Hello. Oh, here's Nick. I think there is Nick. You can, oh no, we haven't lost her. Oh dear. Right. Um, phone calls go. Phone call. How do you get the... Okay, I've got the top on. Um, oh, no, if he's lost the phone call... Hello, is that Yeah, sorry. Right, we need to do the thing. There's a thing happening. Pause. That's alright. It's all fine. There goes Amy. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you are. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so you want to be in. So, the patchouli. At the time when beautiful shawls made from cashmere were being imported from India, they were being scented with patchouli because they keep the moths away. So, there would have been patchouli on people's clothing as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that would just smell good. But yeah, we were in the middle of the, I was in the middle of the, do not use oh, yeah, don't, too don't. much fabric content. Just wash your clothes less frequently, less frequently they will last longer. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it goes towards saving the planet. So, um, People, just wa people wash too much in general. They do. Too much washing going on. Why yeah, is wash less. Forever washing everything. And we, we also have, of course, the festival fragrances for that reason, which were done in the style of fragrances from 120 years ago. Mm. And people used to spray them on to get um, refreshed rather than just um, wash again. Mm -hmm. So, like Napoleon did. Yep. Two litres of fragrance a day. Right. I'm wearing that. Um, oh, you are? That fragrance today, yep. The Marshall. Okay. Thank you. So, this one was. Oh, I know what this is. Cumin. You do. Do you want to bottle it? Yeah. Okay. Cumin because mm. I'm absolutely convinced that some of the people in that room at that time actually didn't wash enough. <laughs> <laughs> because because not everybody gets the balance right and also you know 
they were out for a good time, they might not have been home for a few days. So cumin, lovely spice, also used for the aroma in perfume of um, sweat. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Arthur, what did I do? My oh, there it is. I hid my own pen. Cumin. Two percent. Because all of these, I mean, this is this is strong enough at two percent, is it not? Oh yeah. Next on the list, and for reasons of two things, two things. Um, one, we're making the smell of the actual wooden bar on which all the drinks are standing. There's some bass beer standing on the bar in the picture. Hmm, I've got a uh, bass pub mirror in my room. There's one up the road in the pub. Okay, next one. I need the cumin label. You need the cumin label. It's funny how I, I don't notice when I watch these back. I repeat what you say a lot of the time. Yeah. It's because what I, I say is brilliant. What you say is brilliant. <laughs> Very good. Sorry, go. Um, there you go. Thank you. Um, this is quite subtle compared to... I really, really, now. really recognise it. But I really yes. recognise everything now. Okay, so I just don't know what we it have is. the bar, which is made of wood. Yeah, this is... It's this an absolute. Is, it's called it's Oak Moss. Expensive. It's called Oak Spensive Absolute. It's, think about polishing things. Mr. What, Sheen. What would you, before Mr. Sheen was invented? Teak. What might you have polished it with? Just Elbow it. grease. Um. And, and, and also you could use it to twirl pointy bits in your moustache. Like your gran. Um, I don't know. Not your brand, obviously. Beeswax. Beeswax, oh, yeah, absolute. Yeah. How many hints can I know? It's fine. Right. Yeah. There so we go. that's the beeswax absolute, so we took that as well. Because no expense spared. So we, we did this combination on the, in the events, what we're going to have at the event this evening. By the time mm -hmm. anyone sees this, too late, but I might do it again. Um, so we scented the man and his clothes. We scented the crowd. That's what the cumin's for. The general, gen, general, general aroma of a bustling crowd watching. Uh, there's actually in the corner of the picture, which I had not noticed before, there's a tiny pair of legs on a trapeze. Up in the corner with That's green cool, shoes what's, on. What picture, what's the picture of it? It's called The Bar at the Folie Bergère. And it is it is wonderful and you know it when you see it. Oh, Bass Beer, yeah. I think that the, the reason that there's British beer there is because it was all kicking off with France and Germany at the time. So they imported... British beer instead of German beer. Right. Oh yeah. Here so we go. yeah, we did the bar with all the oh, yeah, trapeze. Uh, the booze on it. I know. How strange. So one of the things I have here, one of the things I was told not to bring at first, right? Don't bring it. Don't bring this because we've got lots of young people there. So I didn't bring it. And then the next thing we, they started talking about Thursday was, oh, all right, the, of course, the woman behind the bar was probably a sex worker. And I was thinking, wh where are the lines drawn then for what mm. we are allowed to talk to young people about? Mm. Oak moss. <laughs> tobacco. It's hard, isn't it, out of context? It is, it is difficult to do this. So this is tobacco absolutely. I, I so, defend myself by not claiming to know anything. I, I it's mean of me. No, it's fun. It's fun. I keep saying oak moss. Uh, well, oak moss. okay. And um, there isn't going to be any oak moss, so. Okay. Then I've got to think of something else. Yeah. Okay. 
But um, maybe I'll just give you this to do. Yeah, it is. Um, the first thing that happened when I went in the room. The back of me. Was Blue drum. That Jeremy Della said, "Did you bring any tobacco?" I said, "No." I said, why not? Because the room would have been full of it. And I didn't really like to say, because they told me I couldn't. But I, mm. uh, I should have. But, um, yeah. I didn't think smelling this would make you want to smoke. It I think it would smoky. do quite the opposite. <laughs> it makes, make you want to wear it, I'd say. But it doesn't... It smells like a freshly rolled cigar tobacco absolute. It doesn't smell... It like smells, it. to me, like blue drum. Rolling tobacco. Yeah. Which is... Have you been to Cuba? I haven't. Well, you know, they, they talk about all this rubbish about people, um, you know, them rolling cigars on the thighs of young women. And yeah, yeah. They don't. They're all, you know, big matrons and they roll them on a leather sofa. Thing, sort of like I think, chair, um, from a but, uh, d does anyone actually say rolled on the thighs of a virgin that phrase does anyone say that seriously I'm going to pull the Mandy face you know, have you watched Mandy like, <laughs> she does that I'm going to take that on uh, I don't know I, I think that that is is that not it that's a sort of um, hyperbole is that the right word it's bollocks that's for yeah. certain could you give me a label yes I think David Brent says that at some point in the office. Oh, probably. In which case, it must be true. Yeah. Um, Lovely. Have you got the lid? No. Oh, I have a lid. I have many. These are a gift from our friend Joe. Because they were spare. So it's nice. It's always lovely to be able to... Somebody says, we're going to buy some bottles. I mean, we don't buy some bottles. So. Right. It's funny, isn't it, the... The absolutes are such a lovely colour, mm. the beeswax and the tobacco. Uh, right, so probably unexpectedly, I'm going to get out. I'm assuming that the oranges that they're using came from Cyprus. Well, you must assume that. Why not? It's not mm. far from France. The tobacco wouldn't make me want to smoke, but this makes me want to eat an orange. And this is the actual, the actual mandora, my favourite. Mmm. I smell it and I instantly feel uh, more relaxed. Good. I should just make you. A, I think did I put? I might have put mandora in in your special cologne. I um, love it. I think that's a really, really great cologne. That is. So, it. Um, is, yeah, it's great. It keeps getting better. I'm going to bring it out, you know. I think you really, I really think you should. Arthur's Secret Session Cologne. I might. I really might, think you should. It might coincide with an event next year. Oh, yeah, the release. The release. Oh, yeah, you should definitely, definitely do that. Yeah. It might it's too be. good not to share. Well, it's kind of you, because I just made it for you. It's but then, remarkable. on the other hand, I am prepared to share this one with you, so. Yeah, yes. So this is the Mandora, reasons for, do you recall seeing in the picture, this is going to be like a, a, a quiz test now, yeah. you just look up the picture, did yeah. you see anything orange in it? Yeah, oranges. Yes, but they are not fresh oranges apparently, somebody did some research. No, they're, they're made of paint. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, ah, then we get into that, mm -hmm. the whole... Um, Yes, painters obviously make things out of paint, but perfumers are supposed to make things out of oranges. <laughs> That's your job. Thank you very much. One of your many jobs. Um, but they're candied oranges. Oh. So they're preserved. And so we're not just going to have the orange. We're going to have, thanks, some... Candy smells, which means I need to go and get the ethyl, ethyl maltol before I set off because... No, I'm looking at this. 
uh, are we saying that they're candied oranges just because that's what they would have been? Yes. Um, how do you candy an orange? Well, have you seen candied orange peel in the past? Have you seen, like, you can get strips of it? Yeah. And, um, I think you basically soak it in sugar. They have to be dry enough not to go mouldy. Mm -hmm. But, or encrusted enough in sugar, so, like you can get candied rose petals and violets yes. and that sort of thing. So you basically, basically dunk them in sugar, is what we're saying. I think that's how you candy things. Um, also, see, but we were allowed to bring the booze. Yeah, great. Um, and this is, we're not supposed to call it cognac anymore. Oh. Because I think the cognac producers said, yes, but it's not, it's not a brand. So I, mean, I swear, actually, now that the UK is outside of that agreement and anyone can call anything Wensleydale cheese now, but <laughs> um, anyway, it's supposed to be called wine fusel essential oil these days, not cognac. That's right, yeah. yeah. Essential oil. This is so. This is the essential oil. There's also an absolute. So we did. We were allowed some other booze. So that's going mm. to be. Take what? I'll get uh, the, the tops inside the thing. I'm going to delegate this to you now, and I'll write labels. So. Practical use of our time here today. Yes. Um, yeah, I think some of the customers are coming. Essential. What strength is it at? Does it say? Ten. Is that bed kit? Write everything down. Thank you very much. Um, now, another thing that was important at the time. We're just definitely introducing some of the synthetics which were available. Because you know me, I'm going to give a talk this evening and it's lovely to have the opportunity to discuss synthetics which were around. What I might do, I suddenly, I suddenly had an idea. Because if my talk is just near the painting, what I'll do is dip a load of strips and stick them in the... Um, frame. <laughs> just wedge them into the frame. You are too fast and too humorous. <laughs> um, no. Nay, lad. I will put them in the little... Sachet Cristal, which hold on to fragrance, mm -hmm. and um, then we can pass them around because they will have dried by then and they won't do anything, any damage at all. Mm. We got that? Uh, I'll do some work to make a change. This? Have we gone dark again? Is. No, we're all right. We're all right. Yeah. Um, this is Cedarwood Atlas. It's oak moss. <laughs> okay, so it's synthetic. Oh yeah, okay. Hang on a minute. Remember that? And it was very popular in late Victorian times because it previously had been only available to the hugely wealthy, this, con this song. Aroma. Oh, it's something. It's Oris. It is very close. So this is iron, iron, iron alpha beta. <laughs> yeah, this one's methyl iron gamma. But you yeah. are. I'm. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna give you. I'm gonna give you eight and a half out of ten for that one because <laughs> that is so close. Yes. So what happened was that people who didn't have a lot of money, thank you, could suddenly start smelling of violets. Yeah. And it made rich people angry, which is great. Well, okay. Not on, not all the time. Um, but because, thank you, they didn't like the idea 
of not being able to tell whether people were rich or not by their smell. So, the fact that servant girls could wear purple, thanks to William Perkin, and smell of violets. So... But don't, they, they surely, you know, they would have just told people that they were rich, they didn't have to have a smell to do it for them. Well, there's things like jobs that you were or were not allowed to do, and if you were of the unwashed, you know, uh, you had to have sort of downstairs jobs, below stairs jobs. Mm -hmm. You could work in the kitchens, you could be a scullery maid, but you weren't allowed upstairs, you couldn't do secretarial jobs and you know, other. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you couldn't be a, I don't know, governess, whatever. Yeah. Hang around with the mobs. Um, so, that that is one of the reasons that we like it. Um, now, but we do need some wood for the bar. Oh, I tell you what we probably need. You don't hate me. Oak moss. <laughs> Cedar wood out of it. Civet. I've got it down to 1%. It's still fairly horrible. You can do that one. But it is, yeah, thank you. It's absolutely grotesque. <laughs> maybe I won't. Maybe I will. Maybe, maybe I won't. Why would you I possibly will. take it? Why would I? Yeah. Just to make people laugh. Yeah, okay, that'll do it. Yeah. Purpose of my life. Uh, yes. Uh, but... So, looking at this painting, yes. Uh, when you first described it, I thought, "Oh, maybe the man's a ghost," mm -hmm. because he's not because he's in the reflection, but he's not in the in the foreground. But then I realised that the painting's from his point of view. Well, so there are discussions about whether or not it was the artist or yeah. a client or um, some kind of. Does it look like Mane? Oh, you know what? I don't know. Let's find out. I should have done more research. That, that would that would be fairly key, I think, to the. Uh, yeah. It it looks just like him. Oh, really? Yeah. In that case. We've settled it. Yeah. Look. That's Manet. Yeah. Yeah, um, sort of out focusing the foreground. Big beard. And then, well, actually, maybe not, because he's only got a moustache in the painting. I can't see all of the painting though. When you see the back of her. Oh yeah, yeah, just a moustache and no. Yeah, no, yeah. maybe it isn't him actually. Oh, how interesting. I'm gonna give you that back. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, it does have. This is civet, is it? At least the lids on it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the um, I might have to bring out sexiest sensitivity edition. Don't wish because that was nice. I like that. Yeah, this is the point of the civet. It's tiny bit doesn't do too much damage to the nose buds. Um, what have I forgotten? I mean, one of the accords was the floor behind the bar. <laughs> we we had fun. Yeah. Um. I also need, what do I need, I've got some rum acetal here, I've got some lavender, which people would have worn. There's a lot of lavender around at the time. Oh yeah. And also, oh, what kind of flower is she wearing? Because I forgot, I, com I looked at the painting at the time, I completely forgot to bring a flower. Um, I have a feeling it's get, white. Let me get it back up again. She's wearing a white and pink oh, yeah. thing. Oh, it looks like Frisia's. Now look at it that close. Hmm. Looks like a fun place to be. It does a bit, doesn't it? The size of these chandeliers. Uh, yes, I've seen I chandeliers. It's the thing, you know, you, you look at it and when you think you can't smell it, you, you feel really 
detached from it, I think. Yeah, it's true. If you can imagine how it really did smell in there. We've got all the ingredients for an Aperol spritz there. <laughs> it's the... I mean, when people talk about place having an atmosphere... It certainly has an atmosphere with the painting. Yes. Um, so I'm going to put a musk in because synthetic musks were big at the time. She looks a little bit like someone who I went to school with. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you want to do? I'll give you the. I'll put the exalted light in because it's not. It wasn't available at the time, but the ones which were aren't around these days. So I put that in because people would have been wearing those musks. Uh, musks, yes. That's my like. doing these projects yeah it's you really know, cool something well it's like gets you so I was watching a bit of a film about Colette which is set at about the same time I suppose yes uh, and after working on this watching that the sounds at that time on television I just thought well this is no good I can't smell it mm. And then you realise that's that's what we're missing. I can understand why people wanted to do smell a vision um, <laughs> in in the cinemas. But... Yeah. Right. Nearly got got a few. I need to do a couple more for some different paintings as well. There's a uh, some a, a peach tree. Oh, lavender. Yes. And there's one of the seaside that we might talk about. So, what next? Which painting do you think you would scent if you got the chance? Oh. Um. You with that, one, didn't I? So that, that came out of nowhere. That um, that's uh... this, by the way, is a CO2 extract of lavender. I find it particularly bright and fresh and wonderful. Mm. It is very nice. I would quite like, I would be interested to see, um, to smell some Jackson Pollock influenced fragrances because they'd be incredibly off the wall yes I suppose that wouldn't be her <laughs> scenting an abstract is different isn't it it is yes just try pouring this because then you could you could just make it up as you go along I could have done this there's a great um painting by Waterhouse mm -hmm. called the, <laughs> I can't pronounce it, the D the Dan 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 Nides? Dan Dan Oh, it's a are Greek, they water nymphs or something? They are, it was a family of, a family of daughters who one of them was betrothed to someone or due to be married to some bloke that she didn't want to get married to so the mum went don't worry, get married to him, and then we'll kill him on the wedding night. So the story goes. I think it's a Greek That's an story. Yeah. So she gets married to him, and then they kill him, and then they get banished down to Hades, mm -hmm. and are perpetually made to fill a basin with water, but the basin has a hole in the bottom of it. So they're just filling a... Using buckets to fill up... There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza. And anyway, the painting by Waterhouse is yeah. of all of them filling up this. What's it's a very sort of wet painting. Yes. But also, uh, you can see like fire and brimstone at the background of it, which I think is. You know. Yeah, that that is. I mean, I, I was at this online talk yesterday, last night, with Dr. Vivian Ming, whom I admire a great deal. This is the first 
online conference seminar thing I've been to in which a horse appeared. <laughs> I kid you not, it's this lovely chestnut looking horse just that stuck its head in. And then unfortunately the man turned his camera off. But did you not acknowledge the fact that the nothing, nobody said anything about that. <laughs> nothing, not a thing. And I was just going to say, did anyone else see that horse? And it, absolutely, there's nothing. Nobody said anything. Um, maybe they weren't looking at him at the time, but anyway, there was there was a horse. Um, Stuart, there was a horse. Um, and but Dr. Vivian Ling was talking about, and, and I have a point. Um, how people tend, we just don't work quite hard enough at things. We ought to put in just a little bit more effort at things, appreciate them more, but also rather than for the short term benefit, we're, we're looking at the long term achievements. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea of coming up with the solution of, oh, we'll marry him anyway and then we'll kill him, instead of actually just having the courage to stand up and say, I think we've made the wrong decision. I'm so sorry, but the wedding's off. And yeah, but then you wouldn't get the dowry, would you? Well, they ended up in hell, perpetually pouring water into a bowl with a hole in the bottom. They're so were possibly atheists. They truly did not think it through. They didn't think it through. You're right. Yeah. Um... I, I, no amount no amount of dowry is worth that yeah. kind of punishment. No. Um, I mean, that might not yeah. be the story. I might have really remembered that wrong. Either I way, I think it just sounds it just quite Greek. To me that it, it, it's, it's typical of the kind of thing that people will do in order to just communicate with somebody as fake they don't don't want an awkward conversation yeah, 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 yeah. so they try and get out of it by doing something <laughs> they think they'll just get away with it and then it always comes back to catch them i've got to kill say him, that is him. a bit of an extreme example it is yeah. but you know just think like how many stupid business decisions get taken because people don't just turn around and go look i made a mistake with this it's like here if somebody does something wrong like I did last week when I accidentally poured a load of creamy vanilla crumble into the oven's chocolate shop. Mm -hmm. So we went, oh dear, I've just done that. Now, I know there are places where people try and keep it quiet because otherwise they know somebody would go, oh, did you do that? Mm -hmm. And... You're going to have to pause. Okay. Okay, yeah, you... There we go, sorry, the battery's running out, so... Um... This that might just again. stop. No, it's fine. It's a, so you're pouring creamy vanilla crumble. Pouring vanilla cream vanilla crumble into the other chocolate shop. Got it wrong. And um, I know there are some companies where the people just try and hide that, just like throw it down the loo or something, pretend it never happened. And I just went and I said, well, let's just bottle it. This is going to like it. This this is your company, though. It is, but I think. I know that you run the risk if you make a mistake of people going, oh, but you did that. Remember that time when you did that and you got that wrong? Yeah. Which is a culture I loathe. Yeah. Um, and also, some, scoring. sometimes bosses put, sometimes bosses run places on fear. Yeah. Fear and ridicule. Yeah. Yeah. People just run places on that. Yeah. Less of that. Yes. Down with that. Down, Down with, with fear and ridicule. Up with openness and communication and putting a little bit more effort in for the long term. And down with fear and ridicule. I like and that. Just put a bit more effort in. Yeah. Just, like, just a little bit. Just put a bit more effort in. It's yeah. really good rule for life. the long term <laughs> games. It's like the reason why I'm currently not... If something goes wrong, I tend to reach for the snacks. Yeah. And instead, I've decided I feel like I'll just have a little dance instead. Yes. That's... Yeah. Owen's going to do it as well, he said. Oh, is he? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got Virginian Cedar. Yes, I, I would have said that if you had you asked me. Yeah, I forgot. I promise. I forgot to ask you. I oh, definitely wouldn't have said Cedarwood Atlas. No. I wouldn't no. have said Cedarwood this Atlas. Was, this is the pencils one. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Unmistakably. And, and uh, well, it is when somebody says pencil. We do have enough battery to go for another little bit. Oh, this is cool. Right. So. 
yeah. Short term aims as opposed to long term strategy. There's, there's lots of research about that stuff. So. Um, but, yes, that's, that's what I think has gone wrong with perfume sales. Yeah. My theory. You go into a shop and everything's going, I want to sell this now. I want to sell this to this person now. Even if that person leaves feeling a little bit sold to. Mm -hmm. Which I always think is a quite unpleasant feeling. You feel as if you've been bamboozled into... You just you have to buy something before they'll let you leave. There is a feeling where you buy something and you don't feel like you actually really, really wanted it. Post-purchase dissonance. That'll be it. It's called... Yeah, it makes you feel a bit, makes you feel a bit, oh, icky. Yeah, post-purchase like assonance is, that was exactly what I wanted, I am so happy, this is mm -hmm. great. Every time I use this pen, mm -hmm. I just go, yes, that's a good pen. Um, this is uh, apricot. Assonance. It is peach lactone, so so peach close lactone, that I'm yeah. not going to argue. Yeah. Oh, it is nice, isn't it? So this is for the Van Gogh, Gogh, Go, um... I go with goth. The Van Gogh peach tree painting. I mean, that is, it's, this is so nice, this. Yeah. Love a lactone. Mm. Creamy peaches. I would... I'll do it while you're sniffing. I would love to smell something where this is front and centre. Paris 1948's fair amount at the beginning. Is it? With quite a lot of... Oak moss. <laughs> Great. Yeah, but just, I, I don't know, I might, yes, I might. Dough in the snow, mm. there's a fair amount of peach lactose. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those things which gets put, I'm doing it again. I could just pour it in. No, it's fine. Well, um, something rewarding. You know your fragrance, the orange tree? I do. So, uh, what I mean is something, let's call it the peach tree. <laughs> I've been thinking about that since since this evening. I do actually have to look at a painting called the peach tree, or the, which of a peach tree. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm thinking that the orange pettigrain, which is the smell of the leaves and the twigs and what have you. Mm. It's, yeah. Okay, that's your next job, Arthur. Thank you. So, I've just been. Now right. rest my thumbs up trying to build a swing at the weekend. Well you've got to use you've got to use the flat of your hand to push that. Oh on. okay. You've got to go like that. Right, I'm not sure. Use the heel of your hand, yeah. Okay. Oh right, thank you. There's probably a machine. I can think yes. of it, I think I've got a machine. Probably. Yeah. Um But yes, yeah, so what do we think then? Okay, I still have it on the floor. Doesn't matter. Might do the Okay. This one. As long as I just... We may run out of battery this. any minute. That's alright. I'm so sorry. Oh, you know, I, I don't mind. I'm just, I'm just going to say, look, look, for the rest of my life, remember that time? It was that <laughs> like, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh! What on earth is that? Rum acetal. Oh wow! Oh, it's at twenty percent. What am I thinking? That. Oh, I know why I did it at twenty percent because I was making it for I was making a whole fragrance at twenty percent. I wanted everything to be at twenty percent dilution. Okay, I'm now I've mixed it with the peach lactone. Yeah. And we've got peachy rum. Peach what? Peachy rum. Peachy rum. <laughs> yeah, you would. I could drink that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I could, yeah, likewise. Oh, that's really nice. It. Just, yes, yes. <laughs> it's really uh, nice. It's not a bad job, this really, is it? No. Considering? Some people have to work for a living. <laughs> Sometimes I have to pack boxes and ship stuff and fill in VAT forms. This makes it look like we do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do it on, yeah. Wow, that is really nice. On that note, 
Yeah, yeah I think that is a good note. We'll, <laughs> we'll, invent, we'll invent a new perfume. We're going to do a rum, acetal, peach, lactone, Oof. tree. Call That's it the, pre the pre peach tree, the peach tree cocktail. Okay, I'll call it the getting gently sloshed underneath a peach tree. Th that is actually a really good name. Thank you. <laughs> sloshed. I don't think I've used the word sloshed since about 1976. 